Hey, hey everyone, how we doing? We're up to day three. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we've, yeah, we're up to day three of seven days. We've covered a few topics now. We've covered my favorite, which is the first one, which was self-love. Actually, you know what? So many of my favorites, so many of my favorite topics. Um, so we covered self-love, we covered, um, Yesterday we covered sleep, which is another awesome one. So if you haven't watched that yet, if you're just jumping on today, then go back. I've been tossing up between or playing up between using Sarah and my SJ business and just seeing where we can get, you know, more of you to see it, you know. So um, today we're on Sarah. So but sharing. Um, so yes, yeah, so if, if you are loving the content, um, please share it because it's so valuable for people there are there's lots of information here we're going to be running over the whole seven days um we've already covered the two which were great um were great were great topics and had really good feedback from people so yeah get on and watch them if you haven't watched them yet that was um sleep and self-love and tonight we're going to dive into hunger. So you can even share now. So if you're watching live now, hi guys. If you're watching live now and you want to share this one, this is all about hunger. We're going to touch on hunger and fullness um, and, and go into a little bit of that. And we'll try and keep it around that um, 15 minute mark as well. So it's not too much for people jumping on. So if you know you're just jumping on or if you're watching this on the replay, you know it's going to be hopefully nice and short and sweet and to the point and take homes again. So every live that um, I've done and will be doing will always have some take homes and some things that you can incorporate into your life and to take action on those things. None of this is secret. If anyone talks to me, I share all the information that I ever get and I do posts about it and I'm not trying to hide anything. Um, I would rather just share the knowledge that I have and what I've learned over the years. So yes, let's, let's get into hunger then. Um, I actually think, personally think, that we have lost what it feels like to be hungry. We seem to satisfy our any time we're even slightly wanting food. Food is at our fingertips all the time. And something I want you to ask yourself is do you eat as a like preventative, like in case you get hungry? You yeah, ask this to a lot of people because, you know, we might have something on or we're doing something and we eat just, just in case I might get hungry. You may not actually get hungry. Yeah, so we're losing that like ability to regulate our hormones, like learning to intuitively eat. And by allowing ourselves to feel hungry, we're meaning those hormones are working and they're working well. So that's probably the biggest thing I want to say at the start is I think that we've lost that ability to learn to read our bodies. So ask yourself that question. Do you do that? Do you sometimes eat just in case you'll get hungry? My best advice with that one is just wait till you do. You're not going to starve. Yeah. Um, because I think, you know, when you think about hunger, what real hunger is, like let's think about third world kids that that's like really hungry. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be right. We'll be okay. Um, and the next thing that I wanted to touch on is there was also going around for, sorry, I'm kicking something down here, a very long time about having to eat every three hours, whether it was sick, <laughs> hi, hi, babe, um, whether it was, you know, six meals a day, five meals a day, every three hours, got to have breakfast, got to do all this. It's actually been scientifically proven now that we don't. It makes no difference on your metabolism. So, I mean, I used to have to do that. you like trying to have your certain meals per day. And so we were thinking, I've got to eat, got to eat, got to eat, got to eat. And by doing that, we're actually losing the ability again to know when we're hungry. And if we're not feeling like it, don't eat. We don't need to force food down our throat to be at a certain time. So it's like stop watching the clock. If you're not hungry at breakfast, don't eat breakfast. You're not hungry at lunch, don't eat lunch yet. If you're not hungry at dinner time, you want something light, you don't have to think because it's dinner, I've got to have something big. So that was my next point. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm just checking my little notes here. Uh, yeah, I've just been through the natural hormones. We lost the ability there. Um, we tend to actually really fear what will happen to us if we get hungry. And I know, and I get some people get hangry. <laughs> They're not the general population. <laughs> Most of us will survive a little bit being hungry. And let me just tell you, this is not something I'm perfect at. I feel like I go through waves of it. So I can feel like I've got it down pat for a while. 
and then it might go off track for a little while and I've noticed I've picked up habits of snacking more and just like nibbling on things and eating when I'm not hungry and all that type of thing. So it's always a work in progress. Um, I feel like I'm actually working on it currently because I've noticed that these little things slip back in because they are default patterns. Yeah. And with things that we've done for a really long time. So something else to look at. Um, and I, one thing that I do want to say that I think a lot of times when people think that they're hungry, we're actually bored or thirsty. Yeah. So we're pretty, pretty much chronically dehydrated. Most of us don't drink enough water. Um, so looking at those ones too, are you actually bored? So ask yourself first question. If you're loving the content, send me some love hearts, guys, say hi, ask any questions you want. Um, so ask yourself First, are you thirsty and even have a big glass of water because that might completely subside your hunger and then ask yourself, am I actually bored? Like if I was to have an apple, is that going to satisfy me? Like, because you know, it's, if you're not wanting an apple, you're probably wanting chocolate. Do you know what I mean? Like, so we're not actually hungry then or having some hummus with carrots or something like that. So if you're happy to eat that, you might be hungry. If you're not, you're probably not hungry. Yeah. So it's just really noticing those signals and what happens in your body. Um, if you're near meal time, and, and this can be a habit that I can do, um, is if you're near meal time and you're feeling really hungry, how often do we go to the cupboard or we're getting dinner ready and we're snacking and we're eating and by the time dinner comes, you're not actually even hungry, but you're eating it because you've made your dinner. Yeah. So then we just end up all picking from our kids' plates. I used to, when I nannied, all the time do that, like pretty much all the time. So as a mom, I do it less now than I used to, but I just still notice like the kids had, we made them little homemade pizzas today and they look so yummy. So I still ate some of their pizza. So I still do it. So it's still something to work on, but it's something to become aware of because if we're not aware of it, we can't do anything about it. But it's really noticing because then you can catch yourself. So if you do it like today, I did it. And then I was like, God, okay, so right. Yep, notice, notice. Next time, don't do it, yeah? Because um, I already have my pizza there. You know, we were my little homemade pizzas. Because um, I'm in a different location. I'm in here over here today. I'm with my beautiful sister-in-law, best friend. And um, I was here last night. But we're back to home tomorrow night's live. Um, what I, the next thing from hunger is fullness. Now, I can remember sitting down with one of my clients, and this has actually happened probably with more than one, that was so shocked when I asked them at the end of the meal, do you ask yourself, are you full or are you hungry? Like in that, they thought that they had to eat till you were full, okay? So a lot of us do, you're not the only ones. So when you sit down and you eat your meal, start with a smaller portion first. So start with something you look and you think, oh, that's, that's smaller than I would normally eat. But start with that portion first. And then when you get to the end of the meal, ask yourself, am I still hungry? Not am I full? Because most likely you won't be full. Unless I go out for a big meal, that's when I get really full. Other than that, um, certain foods will make you feel fuller. So that may you already may be full as well as not hungry. But the question would be to ask yourself, am I still hungry? <laughs> Thanks for some love hearts. Um, because nine times out of 10, you probably won't be hungry. Yeah. So then stop. That's when we need that stop button. And it may even be some little tip there. Maybe if you're serving up your meal and you made more in the meal, then put serve your meal up, put it straight into a like container and then put it away. Because if you put it in the fridge, it's already going to cool down. Put it in the freezer, you know, it's already going to cool down too. So, and it's not there because if you walk back to the bench, it's still there. You may just like, you know, pick some more and whatever and keep nibbling out. Just have a little bit more. So that's the that's a really, 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 really important question of one of the most, like the biggest thing I talk about. It's in my notes for all the women to look at. Um, it's just asking yourself that question. Um Find what works for you too, because one size does not fit all. Just like I say, one eating plan does not fit all. Some people say to me, I really like eating paleo. Great. If it works for you, great. Might not work for someone else, you know, and someone else really enjoys eating a certain way, you know, a certain type. And with that, I meant with also like what works for you, three meals, five meals. It's as long as you're getting your calories spread, however that works for you. For me, I actually really sit well with three main meals and maybe sometimes I have a snack and I have one coffee. So I have my like coffee, but I find I would rather 
have a, a decent meal for breakfast and then go right through to lunch and then another meal and then through and then my meal. So you got to find what works for you. And sometimes snacking can just mean we're adding extra calories. So if we think we've got to have those three meals and then add the extra snacks, the studies have shown that most people will consume more calories than they would have just eaten the main meals. So you'd actually, if you're having those extra meals, you need to reduce your portion sizes for your main meals. So do what works for you. It has to be like that. Um, let's touch on, <coughs> excuse me, because these are in our tips now. So, yes, I jumped into tips without realizing I was in the tips. Uh, portions. Now, I am a firm believer in restrictions do not work. Restrictive diets in the long term do not work ever. I've not seen it yet to last that people will last on a certain diet, restrictive, for years and years and years and years and like in their lifetime. You have to, if you're, if I'm telling someone that, you know, we're, we're on my program or we're coming to see me and then I say, right, okay, so you're not allowed to eat this, 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 and the list goes on and they've got like a page long. They are not going to do it. It's not going to be enjoyable. We want to move slowly to eating healthier, but still being able to have those foods that we really enjoy. So that's where the portions come into it. So reducing our size portions. And a tip with that is say, you know, I used to really love ice cream. I still love it, but not as much as I used to like really want to eat it all the time. So a way that I would avoid eating a whole tub or half a tub in one sitting would be to just buy one ice cream. Yeah. Or instead of buying a block of chocolate, buy a bar or a mini one, you know, so do, and it, it is more cost expensive, but at what cost is it? That's what you need to look at. So look at your portions Portions should be like you've got your protein, which is the size of your palm. You've got your carbohydrates, which is a closed fist. And then you can fill your plate up with veggies and salad. You know, because generally like the old way, like when I grew up, it was like pasta was like your bowl was like this and your pasta was like that. And then there was like some meat on top and there was like no veggies inside. So it's really looking at how we can balance out our plate, work on our portions so that you don't need to eliminate anything. You know, the one rule that the ladies know that I really talk about, that the only thing I say, I'd rather you really, if you can avoid this at all cost, is soft drink. And that's because it's so toxic. You know, look what Coca-Cola does on the ground. Like it takes grease off the ground. What's that doing to your stomach? You know, you can put something in it and it like cleans silver and stuff. That scares me. And it's just got no nutritional value. It just, you know, I really say if you can get rid of that, like you, we don't really need to have it in our life. So if you can eliminate that, that's a little like my one thing. But if you want to have some crisps, I'll recommend here's a brand to have. If you want to have some chocolate, have this. If you want to do that, you know, have, have something. Work on the portions though, because that is the key to you enjoying it and not feeling like you are missing out. And that's that all mentality of if I'm on a diet and I have one biscuit, which it would be a great little portion, having, say, one Tim Tam or something, um, or one chocolate bar, if I'm on a diet, I feel like I've broken it so then I go, oh, crap, well, I'm just going to eat the whole thing now. And now I've done that, so I might as well, let's have pizza tonight. Oh, that's it. My diet's gone, and then we're on, that's the yo-yo, yeah? So if we can just know that when we have that, you know, maybe like when you go out, you can get like a freehand instead of a slice of cheesecake. You know, so we're always just looking, you can still enjoy yourself. Or go and get like, they've got really yummy balls when you're out, like there's chocolate balls and things like that. So you go out, you enjoy yourself. Then you move on from that. Your next meal is back to being a good nutritionally dense, healthy food. You've had your treat. You haven't felt like you've missed out because it's that missing out that makes us want to binge more on it because then we're, oh, we just want to eat it, want to eat it. Because what if I, I can't eat it again? If I want to start my diet on Monday, I'm not going to be able to eat it ever again. You know, we literally have that. The amount of people that I've worked with that have started on a Monday with me and they went out and had Maccas and KFC and like whatever the night before because they wanted to stuff it all in because they thought they were going to be told they could never have it again. So that, that is like one of my fundamental rule, like things I talk about from the start is just that non-restriction. Mindfully eating. And that probably sits down with that too. So when you are having those really yummy things for yourself, like whatever that is, it might even be a glass of wine or um, that you really sit with it and mindfully doing it. You have chosen to sit down and enjoy that and really savor it yeah so it is 
like an enjoyable treat that you have. And I'm not really into like treat words, but if we have these sort of things every day, all day, then they're not really that enjoyable. It's just like everyday food, yeah? So be really mindful, sitting down, not eating in front of the TV, because when you consume food in front of the TV, you will 100% eat more than you would if you were sitting down and having a look while you're eating and, you know, slowing down. Um, dropping the guilt. So drop the guilt. When you do have something, you may have had too much, you've eaten a few extra bars, you've done whatever, you have not broken your di your imaginary diet because you're not on one. So drop the guilt. Move on because the guilt does more damage than you actually the food that you're eating. Enjoy it. Move on from it. Let it go. There's always a new day. New day. Lots of minutes to start fresh and start again. Um, blah, 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 blah. Where are we up to? Serving sizes. Have a look at the serving sizes. Hi, guys. Um, on packages because that's where we can tend to go wrong. So let's go back to the portions a little bit there. Um, we talked about like portion sizes and things. But look, if you are having packaged food, look at the serving sizes. Hey, gorgeous. Because quite often... <laughs> We'll eat something and be like, oh my God, that was meant for three people. That was three serves. So then we have consumed a lot of extra calories. And that will also mean you've, you know, been eating those extra, I was going to say treats then, but that's not the right word for that. But yeah, so really be mindful of serving sizes because that actually gives you an indication of what, how much we should be eating there. Because as we all know, serving sizes have gone off the chops when you go out to dinner. But uh, the more the more money you pay, the less food you get. <laughs> Sorry, but do know so it, it's actually a good option too when you're going out to restaurants to share a meal with someone. If you know it's going to be like you love a chicken parma, you're going to go out, you're going to have your parma, share it so you get to enjoy it without having like a chicken fillet that's like the size of my head. Okay, so <laughs> that's another good tip. Um, I think that's all for my tips tonight. If anyone's got any questions, ask away. And if you watch on the replay, ask anything later and I can jump on and answer any questions. So when I asked some questions on, a, um, on another one, I jumped back and answered it because um, we've been through around 15 minutes. So I'm trying to keep them for you there. And I wanted to finish with asking you tonight if what you're doing is getting you closer or further away from your goals, something to reflect on. So when you're sitting down in a meal or what you're doing, is this actually getting me closer to my goals or further away? It's a really good question and one even, you know, I need to remind myself of often. And my, um, what's it called? My quote of today, quote is from, I don't know who this is actually, Chan Bays. Um, a lot of the others I actually have no idea, but this one had this person on it and I really liked this. Mindful eating replaces self-criticism with self-nurturing. Yeah, so it comes back to that self-love that we went through in the first live. Um, it replaces shame with respect for your own inner wisdom. Oh, just feel that for a minute. Like really feel that because that just feels beautiful to me. Um, we just have got to get back to respecting ourselves, to loving ourselves and choosing us first. So I'm going to leave you with that today. And tomorrow we have, I think it's planning. Yes, success, to, how to plan and be successful in that. Um, that's an awesome one too. Um, I can't, everyone's awesome. I just love all the topics. These are like the best of my favorite ones over the seven days. If you enjoy it, please share it. Send me some love. You can send me some messages. My program starts in next week. What day is it? Wednesday. Like less than one week. Um, I take people for the first week for the eight weeks. So um, as in enrollments for the first week. I'd love to see anyone. If you're interested, send me a message. We can have a chat. Um, lots of love, everyone. Have an amazing night. And I'll see you tomorrow night at 8.30. Bye.